I suppose there's two things about it. One is that people within the Rastafari community who want to get married want to have an, the, the celebrant or the person officiating to be someone from the community, you know, who understands their philosophy, their way of life, and can bring a kind of a Rastafari vibration to the thing. Uh, in practical terms, I mean, I suppose that there would be readings that I would do that other practitioners might not. Give me an example, Nandor. Or, um, for example, I might read some of words from His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie, which would most other people wouldn't do. And did, uh, did His Majesty have views on marriage? Is there some good advice there, some stuff to be working with? Uh, there's a couple of things. One is that um, particularly when Empress Menem died, he said some very moving things about um, her example um, and her role as his companion through life. So there's, there's some oh. wonderful things from there. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is that his, his living example, so when His Majesty was crowned Emperor of Ethiopia in 1930, he broke tradition and he had, uh, him, him and Empress Menem were crowned at the same time, side by side. Previously, um, the Empress would have been crowned a few days later. And so the message and example really is that men and women walk through life side by side in marriage rather than one in front and one behind. Nandra, I feel like getting married, although I am married. <laughs> so, 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 so in fact, it's the same good stuff, isn't it, about mutual respect and equality and sure. those good things. Yeah, and I, mean, I think if you look at all different faiths, religions, ethical philosophies, it is pretty much the same good stuff. Um, and that's, that's the beautiful thing. That, that's the thing that can unite us all. Um, but I think also the way we express them in cultural terms is different for different people. And so, yeah, it's important for the Rastafari people to have a celebrant that recognises that and is able to express our own Rastafari culture. What about non-Rastafari people? Have you, will you, as a celebrant, marry any, any of those people? Oh, absolutely. Look, um, for me, my, my primary focus has been to make sure that the Rastafari community is served. But I've had requests from a whole lot of people who are not Rastafari, but feel the Rastafari vibration or that kind of identify with the culture in some way, uh, even though they wouldn't describe themselves as Rasta. So anyone who wants the kind of um, the ceremony, the kind of ceremony that I'll bring, you know, of course, I'm absolutely happy to uh, participate and to me, you know, being part of something that joins two people who love each other together in a kind of public declaration of love, it's such a beautiful thing. I'm very happy to be yeah, here. I couldn't agree more. Isn't it funny? How old are you, Nandor? 50. I, yeah, yeah, I'm 52, so we're the same age. And, you yeah. know, there was a period 20 or 30 years ago when marriage was becoming super square and no one wanted to do it anymore. Now, yeah. Yeah. you know, whatever kind of marriage you want, you can have, and people are embracing it all over again, which is lovely, isn't it? It is beautiful, and I'm the same. For a long time, I never saw myself getting married, but I, my wife and I were married a few years ago. And I suppose the thing is that it's people are recreating these ceremonies for ourselves. Ceremony is important in life. It marks the passages of life and major events in life. And I think people kind of rejected a, a way of doing it that didn't sit with their own way of thinking. But now, as you say, we can do these things in our own ways. We can remake them. And so then it's about... Um, you know, making it relevant again for people's lives.